containers, ADO.NET containers, and also C Sharp containers that go into making the program we're about to look at. At the highest level, you see the program itself, which also could be described as the namespace. And then you have a class within that program, which is actually a different class from the main form class. It's a class we're going to create. And within that class, there's the data set, which is our first ADO.NET object. And then within the data set, you have several classes or several objects defined. Uh, there's the data table object, and you could have several data table objects. And then within the data table object, there's the data row object, and you almost certainly have multiple data row objects. Very important for this specific program is the data table and data row objects can also be represented as a collection. Uh, the collection name for the data table is tables with an S and the collection name for the data rows is rows with an S. To take a look at the XML again, I've added a few uh, fields or elements, sub-elements of the movie element. Uh, one is the year, which is an integer, and another is uh, the movie title, which amazingly, I can't believe I left out the movie title. That's actually the main subject of uh, this program. And the movie title and movie ID and genre ID are also an ADO uh, data class. Uh, data columns, but they're never explicitly referenced. They're, we just use them as literals in the program you're about to look at. To create the program, we uh, go into File and New Project and use the Windows Form Application Project. And we'll call this uh, XML Movies. and then hit K. And then within the we expand out the form and one of the first things we want to do is go up to uh, project and add class and give the class name uh, movie class. and press add. And you notice both our new class and our old form class are within the namespace XML movies. So in terms of that diagram we looked at, they're both within the same program. The namespace and the program are more or less synonymous. And two things we want to add to the uh, namespaces that are referenced by this class are using system dot windows dot forms and using system dot data which will allow us to reference the uh, ADO dot net data structures both those will and within the form design view, let's give our form a meaningful name in Hungarian notation, <coughs> like FRM main. And uh, put uh, XML movies in the title bar at the top of the form. And back in the <coughs> movie class, first thing we want to do is create a uh, a data set, which is that uh, first ADO.NET uh, class slash object I was talking about.
And you notice I put this at the top of the class, so any methods we put in the class will be able to reference this data set. But it's a private access, so things outside the class won't be able to reference it. And then we want to create a constructor for the, uh, the class, which by definition has the same name as the class itself. And within that, the first thing we want to do is read in the XML. So we'll use DS, our data set, dot, and then do read. I actually want to read the schema first. And the name of our XML is movie.xsd for the schema. And then do DS dot read XML for the main XML file and the name of that file is movie dot XML so whenever we create this class it'll call the uh, constructor which will create a data set that's private to the class and then we'll read in the movie uh, XSD schema and XML main XML file. Then we need another method that returns a data table. Uh, call it get movie. And the reason we need a method that returns a data table is a data set is private and we can't access it from outside this class, which is the way we want it. We want to encapsulate the data and just get the data we want. So this will be a return and reference the tables um, collection. And then the name of the uh, table we want is movie. Now back within the main form we want to drag over a list box. Center that a little bit and then drag over a button And the list box, we want to give a meaningful name of uh, LST list movies. And the button, we want to give a meaningful name of uh, BTN list movies and also give it meaningful text in the button. So that would be, I don't know, be consistent and just say list movies, I guess. And then we need to go over and expand the button out a bit so I can see the text. And now double click on the button to bring up the uh, list movies click event. And then we need to go over and expand the button out a bit so I can see the text. And now double click on the button to bring up the uh, List Movies click event. And the first thing we want to put in the FRM main class is a reference to our movie class. So make that private access. Just call the object MC for movie class. And then within the uh, 
click button event. We want to reference our list box and the items class within our list box and the add method and say add from our movie class actually I'm getting ahead of myself myself what I want to do is do a for each and get a data row and just call the variable row say n and then reference the movie class I typed in what I wanted to say in uh, pause mode uh, basically what I'm saying is for each data row with a variable name of row n MC our movie class dot get movie which returns the movie table if you recall dot rows which is the collection of rows within the movie table and then I say inside this loop uh, take the list box LST list movies dot items dot add which basically adds uh, lines to the list box and take the row which is a variable in our for each loop uh, with a square bracket quotation mark movie title which is the name of our our data column within the table uh, in quotation mark square bracket dot to string because this is actually returning a data column object so we need to convert it to a string or a field object and that's pretty much it that should be enough to get all the movie titles from out of the uh, the XML uh, data file and put them in our list box so I go up and hit the uh, run button start debugging button which also does a compile with any luck that brings up our form no I guess not actually there's a problem with the XML file and it says invalid character in the given encoding line 112 and I actually ran my line count program to see where that was in the file and I've discovered the problem so let's bring up the file uh, there we go and if you notice it says creme de la creme cast <laughs> I cut and pasted this out of Amazon and what we need to do is change this to uh, great cast without the accent aigu which was a character set that can't be handled by this So we changed creme de la creme to uh, great and now we need to stop debugging and recompile and run and this time it actually runs and we hit the list movies and we see all our movie titles 2001 A Space Odyssey, Brainstorm, The Black Hole, Alien, Boys from Brazil, Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter so that actually worked. We used ADO objects uh, that were populated from an XML file via read XML schema and read XML methods of the uh, data set object, ADO data set object. And then we used the uh, various methods from that such as uh, DS tables collection and the data table structure, the data row structure, and the data column structure implicitly with a with a literal. 
and we iterated through the rows collection within the movie table data table type and for each row we got the uh, column name movie title and converted it to string and then added it to the list box with the dot items dot add method so that is pretty much a good introduction to ADO objects used to read XML files uh, you'll probably need to play this multiple times if you're not familiar with it because it's complex information the main thing you want to remember is the diagram I showed at the beginning which I'll expand this out a bit so you can see it a little better basically we have our program and within that we created a class just for handling the data set and that class created a private data set and that data set contains a number of other uh, ADO objects like the data tables which can also be accessed via the tables collection and the data rows within the data tables which can also be accessed via the rows collection so I think once you really understand this diagram it pretty much explains the whole thing so meditate on that and you'll achieve uh, ADO.net enlightenment uh, I hope you enjoyed the lesson